What's going on guys? It's John from Optech coming at you today with another video. This time we're going to be doing some predictions of what the GTX 1070 and the GTX 1080 will produce in terms of FPS and performance. So there's been some leaks of the GP104 chips that to be used in these graphics cards. So without further ado, let's kick off this video. So as you likely already know, the Pascal graphics architecture from NVIDIA is the successor to the Maxwell architecture that you find in all those 900 series cards that so many of us currently have. And having a GTX 970 in my current setup in the Steam hardware survey for March showing 4.93% of users having a GTX 970 variation, this is a topic of interest for me. So let's break it down. The excitement and hype around these cards has been culminating as the release looms nearer and nearer. After doing a top 5 graphics card video back in December, it was apparent from hundreds and hundreds of comments just how stoked everyone is for these new cards. As is usually the case, Nvidia and AMD are continually pushing the boundaries, now with 14 nanometer and 16 nanometer chip fabrication technology. And this innovative tech doesn't stop on the hardware side. It's worth mentioning we also have Microsoft's newest graphics API, DirectX 12, being a highly efficient API that bolsters performance, increases the amount of work delivered to your GPU with faster times, producing higher FPS and a reduction in render times and latency. What matters to a lot of gamers and myself is this increase in frames per second per dollar that will be achievable with Pascal-based graphics cards. With rumors flying of the hard launch of two of these cards from the GeForce lineup, i.e. the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080, on or before Taiwan's Computex show at the end of May. So Nvidia's editor's event has been been leaked that it's being held on the 6th of May, however it won't be open to the public. That said, they are said to be unveiling the GTX 1080, GTX 1070, and GTX 1060. So it's easy to see why the hype and excitement around these cards gains momentum daily. But going off what we saw at the recent GPU technology conference, Nvidia unveiled the Tesla P100 Accelerator, referred to as the most advanced data center GPU ever built. So its purpose is not for gaming, but includes a vast range of sectors that require immense computing and deep learning, ranging from AI for self-driving cars, climate predictions, and even innovations for drugs combating deadly diseases. Other than these advancements in technology with practical applications of aiding and solving the world's biggest problems, is that in the past, this line of products eventually make their way to the gaming market. The Tesla P100 uses the chip GP100, which is said to be the equivalent to the successor to the GM200 chip in the highest performing gaming GPUs from Nvidia, namely the GTX 980 Ti and the Titan X. Albeit changes and tweaks in what ends up in our hands on the consumer side, this still allows allows us to do some extrapolation of the performance and specifications to the successor of the Titan X, i.e. the next gen Titan X. While the next gen highest end graphics cards typically come after the release of the low and mid range cards, which again are expected to have a hard launch at Computex at the end of May, and analysts aren't expecting the really high end top tier gaming cards from Pascal to be released until 2017, it's worth starting at the top and extrapolating downwards for performance expectations of the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080, which are looking to be game changers in the GPU market, perhaps more so than the Maxwell GTX 970 was. So firstly, doing some comparing and contrasting of five different facets of the Pascal GP100 chip used in the Tesla P100 and the GM200 chip used in the Tesla M40 and high M gaming GPUs of the 980 Ti and Titan X. First, the density of transistors is near double with Pascal, which is a key point that has garnered so much excitement. 15.3 billion on Pascal as opposed to 8 billion on the GM200. Secondly, the differences in chip dimensions, the GP100 is 610 millimeter square, which is larger than the 601 millimeter square of the GM200. Third, the GP100 has HBM2 memory, a great advancement from the 384 bit memory bus of the Titan X. Fourth are the clock speeds. On the GP100, on the Tesla P100, it boosts up to 1480 megahertz with a base clock of 1328 megahertz. So, usually on these business oriented products, you don't find such a hefty boost clock. So, that's really saying something. The high overclocks are typically reserved for the gaming GPU 
CPUs and the GP100 exceeds that of the current overclock you can expect on the Titan X, as amazing as it is. And fifth, there's a vast increase in L2 cache. All of these improvements in conjunction will likely yield game-changing gaming graphics cards. Whoa, say that three times fast. Game-changing gaming graphics cards cards. Game-changing gaming graphics cards. So the latest rumors I have seen for the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 aimed at being popular mid to high ranged cards that most of us will be looking at given their superior price to performance ratios and what is looking to be a huge leap in that regard. The chips in these is thought to be the GP104 and a cut down version of the GP104 in the GTX 1070. With an abundance of leaks of the actual chip, this information is pretty solid. And these cards are thought to hit the market in the very near future with a hard release at Taiwan's Computex. So breaking down the specifications of this chip, it's actually smaller in physical size at 330 millimeters square, comparatively speaking to the heart of the Maxwell GTX 970 and 980s with the GM204. The 1080 will likely have eight gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, the first GPU to utilize the brand new GDDR5X standard from Micron, and the 1070 eight gigabyte graphics card will likely have GDDR5 memory. And for some speculation, if the past is ever indicative of the future as the Maxwell GTX 980 and an overclocked GTX 970 were able to outperform their predecessor of the high-end GTX 780 Ti. Going off this, one could reasonably speculate that the GTX 1080 will outperform both the 980 Ti and the Titan X and have a similar price point to the Maxwell GTX 980 at $549. Furthermore, a quote mid-range end quote overclocked Pascal GTX 1070 graphics card likely priced around $450 at launch will be outperforming the 980 Ti. This will be a truly major shift of what the GPU market can offer with regards to price to performance as a corollary diminishing the value of the Maxwell 900 series cards. So this really is an exciting time with optimistic predictions of what will be achievable at likely much less the price of the 980 Ti with the GTX 1070. It really begs the question. This will affect my gaming at 60 or more frames per second at high settings in those AAA titles much less expensive with either a lower range 1000 series like the GTX 1060 thought to be available in the fall and also to be unveiled at the Nvidia editors event on May 6th or going with some older 900 series cards that will be at a discount. Do you guys feel new gamers will opt for the newer tech as before or if the technology may have advanced so much will a lot of gamers be content to spend less to achieve the level of performance they desire? In other words will possible 980 Ti performance in the GTX 1070 and 1080s be over overkill for many. Like most of you, pushing the boundaries and getting into 4K gaming, 1440p gaming, and graphically intensive games at an affordable cost, the visuals are simply mind-blowing and seeing this level of innovation in the industry is truly exciting. Some final thoughts. Given how popular its predecessor, the GTX 970, has been and how much it changed the landscape of the market prior to AMD's R9 390, which also really impressed us, typically besting the 970 at a similar price point. Will the GTX 1070 and 1080 live up to the hype. All right, everyone, that concludes this little video with my expectations for the GTX 1070 and the GTX 1080. You let me know what you guys think of the Pascal architecture, and if you guys are gonna be upgrading to the 1070 or the 1080, or if some of you have been holding out altogether on investing a lot into a GPU until the Pascal architecture hit the gaming GPU market. As always, guys, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and you wanna see more like it. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see a video over AMD's Polaris. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to my channel. I got some cool unboxing, some tech review, and some PC builds on this channel that you will enjoy. This is John from Tech. Catch you guys in the next one.